Marcelo was a boy like no other. His face looked as if it had been carved by the gods. People said his eyes sparkled like stars and his smile could make anyone stop in their tracks. From a young age, Marcelo knew he was different. Wherever he went, people stared at him, whispered to each other, or even tried to take pictures. It didn't take long for him to realize that his beauty brought more trouble than he could handle. At first, he enjoyed the attention, but soon it became too much. People followed him home, girls screamed when they saw him, and everyone wanted to be close to him. Marcelo couldn't even walk down the street without being crowded. He couldn't enjoy a simple life like other kids his age. Instead of playing outside or making friends at school, Marcelo felt trapped by his own looks. By the time he turned 12, Marcelo had made up his mind. He would no longer go outside unless he had to. His parents, though worried, understood. They decided to homeschool him to keep him away from the overwhelming attention. Marcelo spent his days inside the house, hidden from the world. He found comfort in books, video games, and anything that helped him pass the time. He stayed away from windows, didn't go out to play, and hardly ever talked to anyone outside his family. The world outside his home became a distant memory. Marcelo grew older, but the outside world knew little about him. People whispered about the handsome boy who never left his house. Some even made up wild stories about him, but no one knew the truth. Marcelo was content living in his bubble. He didn't miss school, friends, or the chaos of the outside world. He had his parents and his younger sister, Clara. Clara was the only one who kept him connected to the world beyond their home. She would come home from school, telling him all about her day, about her friends, and the things that happened outside. But Clara didn't understand why her brother locked himself away. She admired him, but she wished he would live a normal life like everyone else. Every time she tried to talk him into going out, Marcelo would shake his head. I'm fine here, he would say. Clara loved her brother, but she couldn't understand why he wanted to stay hidden. Every day she would come home and talk about the fun things she did at school, hoping to make Marcelo jealous enough to leave the house. But nothing worked. Marcelo would just smile and nod, then go back to reading or playing his games. One day, Clara decided she'd had enough. She came up with a plan to bring her brother out of his shell. She invited two of her closest friends, Lila and Sophia, over to their house. Clara had never let her friends meet Marcelo, knowing he hated the idea of strangers seeing him. But she thought that if her friends saw him and treated him like a normal person, maybe Marcelo would stop being so afraid. When Lila and Sophia arrived that afternoon, Clara made sure Marcelo didn't know they were there. The girls chatted and laughed in the living room, but Clara's mind was on her plan. She told her friends all about her brother, how he was unbelievably handsome and never left the house. Lila and Sophia were curious. They had heard rumours about Marcelo, but they had never seen him before. Clara knew they couldn't leave without catching a glimpse of him, so she quietly led her friends to Marcelo's room. She knew he was inside, probably lost in one of his books. She carefully opened the door, not wanting to startle him. To her surprise, the door creaked loudly, and Marcelo looked up from his book wearing a face mask. His eyes met theirs, and for a moment no one moved. Lila and Sophia stared at him, their mouths wide open in shock. Clara realized too late that this was a bad idea. Marcelo stood up, confused and angry. Clara, what are you doing? he asked, his voice sharp. Clara stammered, I... I just wanted them to meet you. Marcelo's face tightened with frustration. He hated surprises, and this was the worst kind. He turned away from them, walking toward the window, not wanting to face the attention again. Clara quickly closed the door, pulling her friends away. Her heart pounded. She hadn't meant to make things worse, but she had. Marcelo was clearly upset, and she didn't know how to fix it. Marcelo didn't speak to Clara for the rest of the day. He felt betrayed by his own sister. He had worked so hard to stay hidden, and now two strangers had seen his eyes. He couldn't help but feel exposed. The memory of the way Lila and Sophia had stared at him made him sick. Clara, on the other hand, regretted what she had done. She didn't want to push Marcelo further into isolation, but it seemed like her plan had done just that. She tried to talk to him the next day, but Marcelo wouldn't listen. He locked himself in his room and refused to come out for meals. Days passed, and Marcelo's mood didn't improve. 
He started thinking about his life inside the house. It was safe, yes, but was it really living? He had been avoiding the world for so long that he had forgotten what it felt like to live in it. Marcelo wasn't sure if he was ready to face the outside world again, but something inside him told him that it was time. One morning, Marcelo stood in front of his mirror, staring at his reflection. He knew he couldn't hide forever. He wasn't a child anymore, and the world wasn't as scary as it used to be. Marcelo took a deep breath. Maybe it was time to step outside. Marcelo stood in front of the mirror, staring at himself. For years, his handsome face had caused him nothing but trouble, attracting more attention than he wanted. He had made the decision to step outside and face the world, but this time he had a plan, one that might protect him from all the staring and whispering. He picked up a large black helmet from his desk. It was plain and covered his entire head, hiding his face completely. If they can't see me, they won't care, he muttered to himself. Marcelo had been homeschooled his entire life. His parents never pushed him to attend regular school because they knew how uncomfortable it made him to be around others. But after his parents pleaded with him, he then realized how much he had missed out on. Marcelo decided it was time for a change. He was going to enroll in school. With the helmet securely on his head, Marcelo grabbed his backpack and left the house. His heart pounded with every step he took. He had never been so nervous in his life. What if the helmet didn't work? What if people laughed at him? What if school wasn't what he thought it would be? He shook off the worries and kept walking. This was his chance to live a normal life, just like everyone else. When Marcelo reached the school, the bell had just rung. Students were rushing to their classes, chatting and laughing as they moved through the halls. Marcelo took a deep breath and stepped inside, his helmet hiding his face from everyone around him. He could hear some whispers as he passed by, but no one stopped to stare. His plan seemed to be working. Marcelo walked into his new classroom. The students were already seated, talking loudly and passing notes back and forth. The teacher hadn't arrived yet. As Marcelo stepped inside, all eyes turned to him. At first, no one said anything. The students just stared at the boy wearing a helmet inside the classroom. Then, one of the boys in the back started to laugh. What's with the helmet? Are you scared your brain will fall out? The comment sparked more laughter from the other students. Marcelo's face burned under the helmet, but he stayed calm. He had expected this. He wasn't going to let their laughter get to him. Another student piped up. Maybe he's an alien, and he's hiding his big green head. More laughter followed, and Marcelo could feel his heart racing. He wanted to turn around and leave, but something kept him standing there. This was what he had to face if he wanted to live a normal life. He wasn't going to run away again. Finally, the teacher walked in, a middle-aged man with a serious face. He glanced at Marcelo and raised an eyebrow. You must be the new student. Take a seat, please. Marcelo nodded, grateful for the teacher's no-nonsense attitude. He quickly found a seat in the back, away from most of the other students. The laughter died down, but he could still feel eyes on him. He knew it was going to take time for people to get used to him, but he was willing to wait. After all, this was only the beginning. As the teacher began the lesson, Marcelo tried his best to focus. It was harder than he thought. He hadn't been in a classroom setting before, and everything felt new and overwhelming. But despite the distractions, he was determined to learn. He wanted to prove to himself, and to everyone else, that he could do this. The rest of the day went by in a blur. Marcelo attended his classes, kept his helmet on, and ignored the curious stares and comments from his classmates. By the time the final bell rang, he was exhausted. It had been a tough day, but he had made it through. That was something to be proud of. The next morning, Marcelo stood in front of the mirror again. He looked at the helmet in his hands. It had protected him from the stares and whispers, but it had also made him a target for jokes. He wondered if he should just take it off, face the world without it. But as he thought about it, fear gripped him. What if it was worse without the helmet? What if people stared even more, or worse, followed him around because of how he looked? He sighed and put the helmet back on. Marcelo arrived at school, his helmet firmly in place. The day started just like the one before, whispers, stares, and the occasional joke. But this time, Marcelo wasn't as nervous. He had survived his first day, and he knew he could survive this one too. 
In class, the laughter started again as soon as he entered the room. The same boy from the day before made another joke. Hey, helmet boy, do you sleep with that thing on? More laughter followed, but Marcelo didn't flinch. He walked to his seat and sat down, ignoring the comments. He focused on the lesson, tuning out the noise around him. At lunch, he sat by himself. He didn't mind the isolation, it gave him time to think. He knew that if he kept coming to school every day, people would eventually stop caring about the helmet. They would move on to other things, and he could live his life without all the attention. But for now, he just had to endure. It was the third day of school, and Marcelo sat alone in the classroom during break time, his helmet resting securely on his head. The classroom was almost empty, with most students outside enjoying the fresh air, playing or chatting in groups. Marcelo preferred the silence, the stillness, and the safety of being alone. His thoughts drifted as he tried to focus on the book in front of him. School wasn't so bad academically. He was excelling in his subjects thanks to years of homeschooling. But socially, it was a nightmare. The students here were quick to laugh at him, mock his helmet, and whisper cruel things behind his back. He had grown used to it, but deep down, the loneliness still hurt. Just as he was about to lose himself in the quiet, he noticed someone walking toward him. His heart raced for a moment, wondering if it was another student coming to tease him. He braced himself for the usual snide comments, but this time it was different. The girl approaching him was none other than Beauty, the most beautiful and brilliant girl in the class. Marcelo had noticed her from afar, but never expected her to pay him any attention. She was always surrounded by friends and seemed to have everything he didn't. Confidence, popularity, and charm. Beauty smiled warmly as she stood in front of his desk. Hi, Marcelo. Marcelo's heart skipped a beat. He glanced around, wondering if this was a trick, but no one else was there. Beauty was really talking to him. Hi, Marcelo managed to say, his voice low and unsure. Beauty pulled out a chair and sat down next to him. Her presence was calm and reassuring, unlike the others who usually approached him with mockery in their eyes. I've been watching you in class, she began, her voice gentle. You're really smart, Marcelo. I see how you answer questions and how focused you are in your studies. I'd like to be your friend. Marcelo's eyes widened in surprise. He had been so certain that everyone in his class was a bully, but here was someone completely different. Beauty wasn't making fun of him, she wasn't laughing at his helmet. Instead, she was kind and sincere. You want to be my friend? Marcelo asked, still trying to wrap his mind around it. Beauty nodded. Yes, I think we could be great friends. I'm the most brilliant girl in the class, and you're the most brilliant boy. Together, we could achieve amazing things. Marcelo smiled for the first time in days. He hadn't realized how much he needed a friend until now. The loneliness that had weighed on him suddenly felt lighter. He wasn't alone anymore. Thank you, Marcelo said softly, feeling a warmth he hadn't felt since he started school. I'd like that. From that moment on, Marcelo and Beauty began spending more time together. They shared notes, helped each other with assignments, and talked about everything from school to life outside of it. Marcelo admired how confident Beauty was, how she wasn't afraid to be herself and how she saw past his helmet and quiet nature. But not everyone was happy with their blossoming friendship. Dennis, the school bully, had been keeping a close eye on Marcelo ever since he started. Dennis was the largest student in the class, older than everyone else, because he had been held back for years. He was used to being in control, and he didn't like the idea of someone like Marcelo, a quiet boy who wore a helmet, gaining any attention. When Dennis saw Marcelo and Beauty becoming friends, his anger grew. Beauty had always been the girl Dennis admired, though she had never given him the time of day. Now, seeing her with Marcelo, Dennis's jealousy burned even brighter. One afternoon, after class had ended and most students were gathering their things to leave, Dennis decided he had enough. He stormed over to Marcelo's desk, towering over him with an intimidating glare. Hey, helmet boy! Dennis shouted, his voice filled with anger. I don't know who you think you are, but you need to stay away from beauty. Marcelo froze. He had always been afraid of Dennis, knowing how big and strong the bully was. Dennis had been in the school for years without graduating, and his reputation as a troublemaker was well known. Marcelo didn't want any problems, especially not with someone like Dennis. 
Dennis leaned in closer, his fists clenched. You hear me? Beauty doesn't belong with someone like you. She's mine. So you better stay away from her or you're going to regret it. Marcelo's hands trembled slightly, but he didn't respond. He was too scared to speak. What could he say? Dennis was older, bigger, and meaner. Marcelo wasn't a fighter, and the last thing he wanted was to provoke Dennis any further. Just as Marcelo thought things couldn't get worse, Beauty appeared. She had overheard Dennis's threats and wasn't going to let him get away with it. Dennis, leave him alone. Beauty's voice was strong and clear. Dennis was confused. What are you talking about? I'm saying you need to stop bullying Marcelo, Beauty replied. I don't care how big you are or how long you've been in this school. You have no right to treat him like that. Dennis laughed, trying to brush it off. Oh, come on, Beauty. You really want to hang out with this guy? He's nothing, just a nerd with a helmet. He's not nothing, Beauty said. Marcelo is smart, kind, and a good person. That's more than I can say for you. I would never be friends with a bully like you. Dennis, embarrassed and angry, wanted to say something, but Beauty didn't let him. Stay away from us, Dennis, Beauty warned, or you'll have bigger problems. Dennis gave Marcelo one last angry look before walking away, his pride hurt by Beauty's words. That evening, Marcelo went home feeling lighter than he had in days. He couldn't believe Beauty had stood up for him in front of Dennis. For the first time, someone had seen him for who he was beyond the helmet. He couldn't stop smiling as he sat down for dinner with his mother. His mother noticed his good mood. You seem happy today, Marcelo. Did something good happen at school? Marcelo paused, thinking about beauty and the new friendship they had formed. Yeah, I made a friend, he said with a small smile. His mother's face lit up with joy. A friend? That's wonderful, Marcelo. What's her name? Her name is Beauty, Marcelo said. She's the smartest girl in the class, and she's been really nice to me. She doesn't care about the helmet or anything. His mother's smile widened. Beauty sounds like a lovely girl. You should bring her home sometime. I'd love to meet her. Marcelo hesitated. Not yet, Mom. I don't want to rush things. We're still getting to know each other. His mother nodded, understanding. All right, whenever you're ready. But it's good to hear you've made a friend. The next day at school, something unexpected happened. During class, Dennis, still bitter about the encounter with Beauty, decided to take his anger out on Marcelo again. He walked up to Marcelo's desk and, without warning, yanked the helmet off his head in front of everyone. For a moment, the entire class went silent. Marcelo felt exposed, vulnerable. His hands shot up to cover his face, but it was too late. His perfectly handsome face was now on full display, and every student's eyes were glued to him. Then the whispers started. Wow, he's so handsome, one girl said in awe. I can't believe he was hiding this under that helmet, another added. Soon the girls in the class began to swarm around Marcelo, asking him questions, complimenting his looks, and trying to get his attention. Marcelo, who had always wanted to blend in and stay invisible, was now the center of attention, and he didn't know how to handle it. Beauty watched from a distance, feeling something she had never felt before, jealousy. She didn't like how all the girls were suddenly interested in Marcelo just because of his looks. She had liked him from the start, even when he was wearing the helmet. She didn't care about his appearance, it was his intelligence, kindness and personality that had drawn her to him. During lunch, Marcelo found a moment to escape the crowd and sat down with Beauty. He noticed the look on her face and knew something was wrong. Are you okay? Marcelo asked. Beauty didn't answer right away. She glanced at the group of girls, still staring at them from across the room. They're only interested in you now, because of how you look, she said quietly. It's not fair. Marcelo gave her a reassuring smile. You don't need to worry about them. You're the one who wanted to be my friend when I still had the helmet on. That's what matters to me. Beauty looked at him, her jealousy fading. She realized Marcelo wasn't going to be swayed by a bunch of girls who only cared about his appearance. He valued their friendship more than anything. Meanwhile, the attention Marcelo was getting from the girls didn't go unnoticed by the boys in the class, especially Dennis. He had always been the one getting attention from the girls, even though it was mostly out of fear or because of his size. Now that Marcelo was in the spotlight, Dennis felt his control slipping, and it made him furious. 
The other male students were also growing jealous. They couldn't believe that Marcelo, the quiet boy who wore a helmet, had suddenly become the most popular guy in school. Everywhere Marcelo went, the girls followed, giggling and trying to talk to him. Marcelo, however, didn't let it go to his head. He still stuck close to beauty and made it clear that he wasn't interested in anyone else. Whenever the girls tried to get too close, he politely excused himself or changed the subject. He was more focused on his studies and his friendship with beauty than the sudden attention he was getting. But the boys, especially Dennis, weren't going to let it go that easily. They couldn't stand the idea of Marcelo being at the center of everything. Dennis, in particular, was plotting his next move, determined to make sure Marcelo's rise to popularity wouldn't last long. Dennis, consumed by jealousy and anger, couldn't stand watching Marcelo receive all the attention. Every day, it ate away at him. Marcelo was now admired by the girls and respected by the boys, and Dennis, who used to be feared, felt powerless. He couldn't take it anymore. He decided he needed to do something drastic, something that would get rid of Marcelo for good. One afternoon, Dennis gathered a group of boys who had always looked up to him. They were scared of him, but they also saw him as a leader. He whispered his plan to them in secret. They would corner Marcelo after school and teach him a lesson so bad that he wouldn't be able to come back to school. In fact, Dennis wanted them to go further than just a beating. He wanted Marcelo gone for good. The boys were shocked at first, but some of them were too afraid to argue. However, one of the boys, named Peter, had always felt that Dennis was too harsh and cruel. He had never liked the way Dennis bullied people. Peter stayed quiet during the meeting, but knew in his heart that this plan was wrong. He couldn't go along with it. The next day, before anything could happen, Peter went to the school authorities. He told them everything. Dennis's plan, the meeting, and what they were going to do to Marcelo. The school took Peter's warning seriously. They quickly alerted the police and set up a plan to catch Dennis in the act. After school, just as Dennis and the group of boys were preparing to ambush Marcelo, the police arrived. Dennis was arrested on the spot and the other boys were questioned. The truth came out and the school was shocked by how far Dennis was willing to go just because of jealousy. That day, everything changed. The students who had always been scared of Dennis suddenly felt relieved. They no longer had to live in fear of his bullying and threats. Many of them were happy that he was finally gone. The atmosphere at school became lighter and students started to enjoy coming to class without worrying about Dennis causing trouble. Marcelo, although shocked by what had almost happened, was thankful for Peter's bravery. He made sure to thank him and even became friends with him. Life at school became more peaceful, and Marcelo continued to focus on his studies and his friendship with Beauty. A few weeks later, Marcelo decided it was time to introduce Beauty to his parents. He had talked about her many times, and his parents were eager to meet the girl who had been so kind to their son. Marcelo invited Beauty over for dinner. His parents, especially his mother, were thrilled to meet her. Beauty arrived looking as graceful and kind as ever. Marcelo's mother instantly liked her. The way Beauty spoke, her politeness, and the fact that she had stood by Marcelo when others hadn't impressed them. Throughout the evening, they talked and laughed, and Beauty fit in perfectly with Marcelo's family. His mother even pulled him aside after dinner to say, She's wonderful, Marcelo. You found a special girl. Marcelo couldn't stop smiling. It was like everything in his life was finally falling into place. He had gone from being a boy who hid behind a helmet, afraid of the world, to someone who was now confident, with friends and a family who supported him. Over the next few years, Marcelo and Beauty's relationship only grew stronger. They both graduated with top honors, and their bond remained unbreakable. Marcelo's parents loved Beauty like she was part of their own family, and Beauty's parents also adored Marcelo. The two families often spent time together, and it was clear to everyone that Marcelo and Beauty were meant to be. Eventually Marcelo proposed to Beauty, and she happily accepted. Their wedding was a beautiful and joyful celebration. Friends, family, and even some of their former classmates attended. Everyone could see how happy they were together. As they stood at the altar, looking into each other's eyes, Marcelo couldn't help but think back to the day he first walked into school with his helmet on, afraid of what people would think of him. He never imagined that things would turn out this way, that he would meet someone like Beauty.
someone who saw him for who he was on the inside long before anyone else. Beauty smiled at him as they exchanged vows, and Marcelo knew that no matter what challenges they faced in life, they would always have each other. From that day on, Marcelo and Beauty built a life together, filled with love, support, and happiness. The days of hiding behind a helmet and being afraid of the world were long behind him. Now he faced life head-on, with Beauty by his side, knowing that he had found true friendship, love, and acceptance. Dennis never graduated because he was dull and had spent too many years repeating the same grades. After his arrest, his reputation was ruined, and no school would take him in. Without any other options, Dennis eventually became a bus driver. While Marcelo and Beauty moved on with their lives, building a bright future together, Dennis's life took a very different path. He drove the same route every day, watching others move forward, a reminder of how jealousy and arrogance had held him back from ever achieving more. Dear viewers, if you enjoyed this story, please like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on notifications for more inspiring tales. Stay blessed and thank you for your support.